Welcome to this edition of the Nice Job Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Hill. A little bit of a different episode coming your way. I sat down with the marketing team here at Nice Job, Curtis Davey, Devin Perryman, Kevin Elliott, and myself answered questions from you, our loyal listeners. Now, this was recorded as a part of our live chat series on Facebook prior to Black Friday. And at the end, we tease a little bit of the deal to come. Well, I'm happy to report we've extended the deal from Black Friday through Cyber Week. So if you're listening to this episode prior to the end of December 4th, you can get the Black Friday pricing. It's 50% off for four months on all new signups and upgrades. Just go to get.nicejob.co slash black dash Friday dash 2020. And while there is some dated material towards the very end, all of the questions in this episode are relevant any time of year. If you have any additional questions, send us an email at podcast at nicejob.co. Without further ado, let's get to our special Q&A. All right, welcome everybody in. It's a live chat, nice job live chat, presented by Engage, real-time social proof, available absolutely for free. And we're doing a lot of free things this week as part of the lead up to Black Friday, including this particular podcast, a special episode where I have the rest of the marketing team from Nice Job here with me to answer your marketing questions. Now, we asked, you could email them in, you could comment uh, wherever you saw us kind of asking and presenting that we were gonna have uh, this episode upcoming. However, if you missed that, or you're just joining us here live now, you can always comment below your question Uh, and we'll get it here in this episode. Who knows how long this episode will be. If you guys have questions, we're gonna stay here and answer them for as long as we possibly can. Uh, But we also wanna make sure that you can get back to doing what you do best, which is out there making that sweet, sweet cash. So let me introduce my guest here for the moment. I wanna welcome in our content manager, Devin Perryman. Devin, how are you today? I'm good, thanks, Sean. Thanks for having us. I'll do this collective chat. Nice. And I also want to offer uh, a welcome to our partnerships manager, Curtis Davey. Curtis, how are you? I am very well, thanks. It has been a busy, busy day getting ready for the upcoming Black Friday sale. And of course, welcoming all of our, uh, sending all our Thanksgiving wishes to all of our American partners. So looking forward to chatting this through. And our digital marketing manager, Kevin Elliott. Uh, if you have questions about SEO, uh, some website, things like that, that is your man. Kevin, how are you? Dope. Um, got my coffee. I got my friends on the screen here with me. Um, excited to talk about ways we can help small businesses succeed. And Curtis, you talked about uh, Black Friday coming up. We're not announcing the deal. I know some people are tuning in thinking that we might tease that, um, but we're going to have a, a special deal that is coming out on Black Friday. Um, but what I also thought is great is we have a, a couple uh, partners that are doing some deals as well, and we're going to be trying to, to showcase them. Absolutely. We have a number of partners, too many to count, too many to name here, Uh, but all of our major integration partners and a few of our agency partners are offering special deals to their customers as well for Black Friday and potentially Cyber Week. Stay tuned for that. But we'll be having all of those details in a blog post and sharing those details via social media come Friday and uh, Monday again, if there's anything to know for that future week. So if you're already a nice job user, uh, there's going to be an element of the sale that you can take advantage of, but there's also going to be a lot of content coming from us uh, to maybe enhance other elements of your business as well. Well, if the rest of you out there are ready, I think we can get to our uh, first question. Um, and this is an interesting one because it, it I knew when I was asking what type of questions uh, would you have out there. Because of what we do at Reputation Marketing, we were going to get questions about reviews uh, and about promotions of them. Uh, And this was our first one that came up, which is, if my reviews don't have any detail, what is the best way to promote them? Now, this one came in via email. And so I asked for a little bit more uh, so we could dive into it. And it was, you know, you get a lot of reviews. They might just say five stars, but there's no detail with them. Um, You know, more of a narrative, more of a story is obviously an easier share, but there still is a way uh, to get them out there and, and help promote. And, and Devin, I want to go to you first uh, to ask your thoughts on this one. If you're getting a review, say it's a five star, but it has no detail, 
How can you take that and still turn it into some great marketing aspects? I mean, I think there's probably a, still a lot that you can do. Um, my brain immediately goes to, you know, if you are familiar with that customer, you can always ask them um, to elaborate. You can reply to the review or potentially ask them in some other offline uh, communication form. But if you're left with just those shiny stars, which are great, um, they still say a lot about your business. Um, so you can do some different things with that besides just, you know, showcasing them on your website. You can also promote um, your average star rating or your last review rating um, on social media. And those things go a really long way. Like I said, it still says a lot about your business. And Curtis, I want to get your take on this one as well, um, because, you know, as you start getting up more and more and more, perhaps you're not sharing them one at a time, but taking a collection of five star reviews and perhaps adding some visuals to it can create good content as well. For sure. I love the element of visual storytelling, and this is a great way for you to add a special touch in your own business story to that story. So if you have a five-star review without any text, uh, add a photo, either of your truck, of your team, maybe of the technician who did the job. That give might give the customer itself a little prompt or reminder of the bright, shiny face that was there taking care of the service. But then it also allows you with a nice job to add a customer story. And if you go in and develop that customer story a bit more, you can tell the story about what the job entailed. Uh, it can even be just a message of thanks to that customer. You can call them by their name and say, hey, thanks, John Smith, for your business. We really appreciate serving you over the past 10 years. And then with that photo of a smiling technician, it can still be turned into a really compelling piece of marketing. And Kevin, uh, I think you might have an interesting perspective here of, you know, the more posting you're doing, there's going to have some benefits when it perhaps comes, uh, you know, to the SEO or just kind of your, your viability online. Can you talk about why it's important to make sure that you're having, uh, you know, more and more user generated content? Uh, obviously, if you're automating through nice job, you're going to share those out, especially when it has a lot of detail. But sometimes it's important to go and, and create your own post because that's really going to help, you know, you be found as well, correct? Certainly. And uh, just coming back to some of the points that Devin and Curtis already made, um, there, there's, it's not bad uh, this, if all you have is the stars. Uh, that's still a, a, you still, it's still a baseline benefit. Um, that helps not this with being able to show off your reviews to, to others, but also with search engine optimization, um, as well as uh, paid advertising opportunities. Um, people just like looking at stars. Um, to come back to uh, Curtis's point, I think uh, that might be an indication of an opportunity to uh, make a connection with your guest or customize the the outreach message to maybe preemptively mitigate this kind of situation moving forward there's there's lots of really um personable ways that you can start getting more details in your reviews themselves um to i guess address your, your question specifically um you know i think um devin touched on this uh, a little bit if you all you have is the stars and the person's name you can create a social media post out of that and you know there's lots of lots of ways that you can leverage you know there's lots of ways you could squeeze lemon out of uh, lemon juice out of the lemon so to speak um let's say you want to share uh, a visual review um on your social media or even this on your your website sprucing it up as a as a as a post making a little poster out of it adding in the stars adding in your own caption um, presenting it as kind of like a custom testimonial as opposed to um, a screen grab of text from a, a Google review or a Facebook review. Um, there's, you know, certainly lots of additional avenues that, um, as you kind of touched upon your question, have subsidiary benefits down the road when it comes to Google marketing uh, and website marketing as well. And that actually leads perfectly into our uh, next question was, is there a way to take my reviews to Instagram? Now, there's, there's no native uh, connection at the moment. Um, however, you know, there's some tools out there that you can take, you know, the copy of your reviews and turn it into a great Instagram post. Uh, Devin, I'll start with you as the uh, individual that runs the nice job Instagram. Um you know, you you get an aesthetic through it, but Instagram is very much a visual platform just by its nature. And so sometimes, you know, the text alone, in my opinion, something could be best served in the caption and have a great visual. So it could be as simple as that. But if you're going to go a step further and perhaps uh, as you've done on our page, which, which you can check out at Nice Job App, um, is taking text and making a good visual just from a text alone. Can you take us through a little bit of, of that process or you know, what might be a great mindset for taking, you know, a great review and publishing it on Instagram? 
Yeah. Um, Instagram, like you said, is a visual platform. So you want to play to that. Um, Curtis mentioned being able to add visuals to your reviews. So if you've taken that step, you can um, easily turn that into a graphic that would be suitable for Instagram. That's typically what we do. Um, we use a free tool um, called Canva um, to do that. And that way you can share them directly to your feed. Another great way to share them is through your stories, which are very um, a digestible way for people to sort of see those reviews. And once they're in your stories, you can also add them as a highlight. That way, if future customers are landing on your Instagram page, um, they can go through and read those reviews there just as they would say on Google. Um, they'll all be in one primary spot and they'll live there forever then. Um, so I think those are a couple of, of great ways that you can um, showcase your reviews on Instagram, even though it doesn't, it's not exactly a review friendly platform just yet. I'm, I'm sure it'll get there one day, but um, yeah, there's a lot of ways to get around that. And I think, uh, like I said, I think an Instagram page, you're finding out more about the company kind of as a whole. So just content wise in general, you want to share, you know, your team, uh, you know, equipment before and afters. If you have a good visual presence there, um, like I said, the easiest way is you can slot those, the text right into the captions. Um, but you can also kind of just break it up every now and then make a nice, you know, visually appealing uh, graphic with text there. Um, when it comes to Instagram, I think this actually um, helps with our, our next question here, which Curtis, I'm gonna go to you first. How should I approach co-marketing with another business in my area? Um, a lot of times through Instagram or even Facebook and, and other networks, you kind of start connecting with businesses around you. You know, you're kind of liking, maybe you're swapping one another's stories. Um, but we definitely saw in 2020, there might be an opportunity to really co-market together, especially as we saw some businesses, you know, shut down, kind of be unable to service, but they still could kind of help or assist or, or come together to serve their community. Uh, I'm interested to hear, uh, you know, Chris, what, what your kind of your high level, but what, what you should look at first if you're thinking about uh, approaching another business to, to co-market. Yeah, and this can be approached either reactively or proactively. So a reactive situation would be one where you find yourself on the same job site or perhaps you've seen the work of or a yard sign even of a company that might have come before you servicing that same customer, be it residential or commercial. A great way for the, you to work with somebody on that front is if you're on the job site together, just start talking to the manager or whoever is there on the highest level express your interest in maybe turning this into a case study. So you can showcase how you and this other company have come together to work together to create a really compelling and beautiful product at the end, uh, to get a really great testimonial for both of you for the jobs you've done both independently and collectively on that job. If it's somebody who is, you've seen a yard sign on the job or on the same site as yours, uh, reach out to them and say, hey, we also work with this customer. Perhaps there's other customers we either work with previously or are interested in working with in the future. And that sort of leads me to the proactive approach where uh, if you're a cleaning company or let's say a window washing company and you see that there's a lot of new home construction in the area, you can reach out to that company and look to build a partnership where once the job is done, the house is built, there's obviously a lot of debris, a lot of sediment, a lot of dust and dirt around. That's a perfect opportunity for you to come in and pitch your services to help really clean up that house, to wash all the windows, so that you're putting that finishing touches on a job that they've completed, which makes you both look really great. Certainly it leads to some easy jobs and a great opportunity for you to start co-marketing and co-promoting each other in all of your efforts, be that you know internally in terms of word of mouth referrals or even externally with some collective ads you're doing together or maybe a, a door hanger that you're gonna hang and produce together. So there's tons of different op options and I highly recommend uh, looking into that with any of your local area and service providers. And Kevin, I, you know, Curtis touched on, you know, case studies and things of that nature. Those can all turn into to great blog content and, and things of that. Um, if you want to approach, say, uh, a partner or, you know, another business in your area that has, you know, a robust blog or, or has a very popular newsletter, um, what could your pitch be as someone that wants to partner just so it doesn't come off as like, hey, uh, want to just talk about me in, in your blog there? Um, you know, what's some good uh, advice that you could give on perhaps, you know, the first conversation of trying, maybe if you're the smaller guy uh, or gal in the situation uh, of reaching out to that, that bigger entity? Certainly, uh, you kind of touched upon it with you don't want to be like, hey, help me out. Uh, it all comes down to reciprocity and what is it that you are bringing to the table? Um, you know, I think Curtis kind of implied this in, in how he was answering the question. Um, it all comes down to relationships. And if there's, <clears throat> excuse me, 
an opportunity um, to provide uh, mutual value with, with overlapping services, uh, whether it be through um, uh, partnering together on your, your complementary services. Um, you could suggest, you could offer to exchange backlinks. Um, that is more of a, a technical digital marketing option. Um, if you are exchanging um, content ideas that can be part of a, a greater promotion or a greater relationship, um, whatever it is, whether it be like you are, um, you know, maybe you're teaming up with your suppliers and you both have a, a, a mutual, you know, sort of benefit to offer, um, you're, you're just teaming up with another um, service provider in your area that doesn't do the exact same thing as you do, but you know, there's, there's certainly benefits to the end customer if you guys are sort of uh, teaming up together. Um, you know, whatever it is, the the key is to promote it. Uh, sorry, to approach it from the perspective of you know, what can I bring to this table for this other business, and and how does it um, benefit us both equally? And Devin, I want to bring you in to kind of to cap this all off here um, and talking about co marketing. Is I also think it's appropriate to find someone where the marketing is generally similar, just so you can match tone. Because I, if you have a good tone, uh, you know, within your messaging. I think that kind of helps when you're in other avenues or, or in other uh, ecosystems, excuse me, to kind of really connect because you're reaching out to a whole new audience sometimes through co-marketing uh, because they might, you know, they're connected with this landscaper because that's what they're focused on. That's what they're interested in. If you come in as a window cleaner, how can you match that same tone? Can you give some tips on kind of identify of like finding your own voice when it comes to, you know, blogs and things like that? Yeah, I think, when it comes to co-marketing, I mean, you never want to abandon your own brand or voice. Um, that should remain consistent, even if you are joining forces with somebody else. However, it is a great idea to look for somebody that would be a natural fit, um, especially if you're going to be talking to a new audience that would also see a benefit. Um, you can keep your voice, you can keep your tone um, and just make sure that you're highlighting whatever those benefits are that you bring to the table. I, I think I'm echoing what Kevin said, but um, that's precisely it. And um, you always want to be presenting as no matter what medium it is, whether it's a blog, whether it's a newsletter or whatever the communication is, is what's in it for the person who's reading that or is seeing um, you know, the content that you're putting out. As long as you're answering that and staying true to your brand, I think you'll probably have a really strong co-marketing approach. And so this next question here uh, was one of the first ones that came in uh, and it's a little um, of, a, of a specific question, um, but I really wanted to dive into to this one in particular. Uh, and, and Kevin, I'll kind of start off with you on, on the response here. Um, but it was a, a user of Nice Job that talked about that they're starting to service uh, a, a new territory. Um, however, there's no brick and mortar location within that territory. And so he he asked, he's like, he's having a difficult time, you know, getting good traction on local Google searches. He has a landing page, doesn't seem to help much. What more could you do to help? I don't think he was calling you out specifically, Kevin. Uh, but I think he was kind of asking, you know, either your, your reputation marketing team, uh, whether it's, you know, you're going through nice job software or something like that. But it's an interesting question, Kevin, uh, you know, new territory without a brick and mortar, but still trying to own that local Google search. Uh, you know, if they already have the landing page, where are they going from there? Um, certainly having the, the landing page is, is, a, is a great start. Um, it's okay. I'm sure they, they weren't calling me out specifically, although I'd be certainly more than happy to help. I'll tell you what, you, you know, reach out to me on LinkedIn. We can set up a, a conversation with whoever this person answered this question. You know, I'm always available. Um, as well as, you know, certainly if this person is a, you know, a, a nice job user, presumably a convert user. They they have a, a an awesome convert website with us. Um, a lot of the the recommendations I'll make are you know are items uh, that can be worked out with your um, you know your nice job convert specialist. Um, you know, first thing I'd always do is if you have questions like this and you have a you know a company like nice job is here to support you and and make sure that your be your website is providing you leads and sales and conversions. Um, you know, reach out to us and. Um, will definitely help you to optimize, you know, whatever it is you need. Um, a little bit more high level, more generically. Um, this does, you know, Sean, you kind of spoke to this a little bit. Um, this is a really unique kind of situation that actually happens quite a lot, especially with service businesses. It's, it's local SEOs, it's known, which is where you're ranking for, um, obviously, uh, local queries in your area, people who want to search 
things that are near them. Google will privilege um, search results that you know have local mailing addresses in the Google My Business account. Um, but a lot of companies, especially a lot of local service-based companies, you know, they'll have their 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 office in in one city, but they're they're servicing like the ten nearby cities, you know, in a nearby radius. Um, but that's not where their you know their mailing address is. Or that's not where they have a brick and mortar location. Um, so definitely the landing page, these are all things that nice job can help you do if you have a convert website or even, but if you're not a convert user, you're just a reviews user, or you're just looking for advice in general. Um, the basics are making sure you do, you know, keyword research. There's a lot of, some of them are paid tools, but there's a free tools out there like, um, Google keyword research planner, for example. Um, you can set up a free account on Google ads. Um, you don't have to run any paid it's ads to use. I inadvertently set off my Google speaker while uh, talking about Google ads. Um, apologies. That's how connected Kevin is with Google. So if he's talking about anything kind of Google related, he, <laughs> he's got the, the Chromebook, if I'm not mistaken. He's got the Pixel. Uh, I, it, not on this podcast. Oh, cool. We'll find out someday if he has a Google tattoo. Um, but so, sorry, I, I didn't mean to disrupt you there, but go ahead. So many times my, my Pixel phone, if it hears the word Google, it will think I'm trying to talk to it. Um, uh, make sure you're doing the basics. Do keyword research. Um, put the city name in your, your title tags for the landing pages, make sure you're optimizing your meta descriptions, um, little things as well, like the, uh, the URL structure have consistency between all of your local landing pages, you know, company name slash, um, city name dash service. If you put in the service name in there, that's also really helpful. Um, I would have a word of caution if once you start getting to maybe more than a dozen or especially if maybe a dozen and a half um, pages uh, or locales, if you will. Um, it actually starts to have diminishing returns if you're just listing all of those off individually in the footer of your website and linking to them. Um, so keep things as simple and as streamlined as you can. Um, also focus on linking internally to other pages on your site. If you have some services that you're talking about and you did um, a particular service in one city, uh, you know, link to it from, you know, like a services page to your location page and include like the city name and the anchor text. Um, this is where also maybe case studies or a website portfolio come into, you know, um, so it come really handy. Um, external links, also known as backlinks, where you get, you know, other websites to maybe link to your company page. If you're thinking about city specific ones, um, I don't know, say you're like a, you're a lawn maintenance company and you want to promote like a go bagless environmental health initiative, um, create some content where you're linking to like the, a city's webpage where they're talking about promoting this initiative for the, the city wide. Um, if you're linking to or partnering with or creating content either about or with, um, city resources that are relevant to what you're offering or maybe local chambers of commerce, uh, for instance, those things tend to go a long way. Um, coming back to the the website idea, um, certainly include like maybe an areas we serve um, section in the, the header of your website. Um, at the end of the day, I would always say make the content in your website user friendly and you know speak with your convert team about what kind of content can we put on our content website or. Um, if you're just managing your own website, what kind of content can I, can I start managing, um, where I'm creating content about the work I'm doing in this city or, um, maybe getting more reviews from people who are in that city, encouraging them to talk about, um, their own location in the actual, um, content of the review. Um, th those are all certainly a lot of great ideas to really help boost, uh, local SEO rankings for areas where you don't serve. You brought up a great point regarding backlinks and certainly getting any kind of backlinks you can from local chambers of commerce, any local business listings will go a long way towards increasing your uh, Google search presence in those pages. Uh, but certainly on the partnerships front, this goes back to the idea of co-marketing. If you're striking a co-marketing partnership with any local service provider in that new area, ask for a backlink on their website, be it through the blog or maybe as a partner link uh, down in their footer. Any kind of traffic you can generate from that local area and businesses in that local area will go a long way to, towards highlighting you higher on those Google pages and uh, just making you far more relevant to any customers in that area. 
Yeah, if you're just joining us in, uh, the question that we were uh, discussing right now was uh, a business, the one out there is starting a new territory. They don't have a brick and mortar location there. And they were having trouble kind of getting some traction when it came to Google searches. Uh, you know, Kevin talked a lot about what you can kind of do you know, within your own website, within your landing page. And Kevin, you touched on something uh, in particular, um, which Devin, I, I know that you'll have some good insight on as well, um, which is, you know, perhaps as part of your process and, and asking a review or, or getting feedback, you know, things are gonna go on your website is have them mention, you know, the the neighborhood, there might be any things like that, uh, or even simple as like, you know, I'm so glad that th there's a company like this in, in my town. Um, Cause, because that could become good social posts, which will certainly help kind of add uh, some more to it. So Devin, I, I, you know, looking from the social element of it, um, what other tips could you kind of add in to kind of help with getting traction in a new uh, territory? Yeah, absolutely. I think when it comes to making a splash in your local market, social media is certainly one of the top places people still go to look um, for local businesses. So whether you are um, active or engaging in some local groups, I know they certainly exist on Facebook in my local town um, and you hear a lot from local businesses, that seems to go a long way. Um, and that's for Facebook. If you're thinking Instagram, I would encourage you to use um, very niche or very localized hashtags so that when people are searching um, in particular, maybe for this town, um, they will see your posts come up. Um, and there's a good chance that they will be local potential customers. Um, so I would say that you can go a really long way um, in making a splash um, in your local market if you use social media strategically to do that. Yeah, and for certain, you know, talking about nice job in particular, because I know this is a nice job user, you know, uh, using, um, you know, tags, a lot of time we talk about, you know, tagging, you know, photos uh, and reviews, things like that with, you know, the service, um, using a location, could be great as that as well. Um, being able to create stories, Curtis, I know you're a big fan of the kind of people creating their own stories. Uh, so I'll let you uh, run with that in a moment. But if you can create a story showing off the new territory that you're working in, I mean, ultimately, when we talk about social proof, uh, it's about how good you are. And, and it's, you know, about being available as well. So if you're able to kind of show and, and connect in that regard, um, you know, that's going to help get you on that radar and, and it'll really start to spread from there. But Curtis, like the, the stories in general, um, you know, that's probably a great opportunity to be able uh, to uniquely show what you are doing. Uh, any advice on perhaps if someone's never really uh, used the stories feature kind of extensively, uh, how they could really use that to their advantage? Yeah, within Nice Job, there is the ability to edit stories in the Stories tab. And I'm sure once you sort of look into it and our customer success and sales team can walk you through it. But essentially within that, that gives you the ability to add either a location tag and or a content tag. So on the location front, that helps you become discoverable to anybody searching for posts in that area. That helps you to highlight customers in that area that you are either providing a new service or are active in that area. And on the content front, you can use you know, keywords that relate to your business or to the services you provide, or more importantly, to use some potential hashtags, which will make you discoverable in a local area. So you could even use the hashtag of the city itself and get a lot of traffic that way. Alternatively, hashtags that relate to your specific business and or topics in your industry will go a long way towards increasing engagement and visibility of those posts. And Devin, I wanted to kind of ask you, uh, as someone that you know handles our social media things like that, um, to touch just very briefly on uh, like with content creation of perhaps some unique ways uh, to to show off your your business. I know a lot of people think like before and afters, but does anything come to mind in this sort of situation if you're trying to I don't know impress someone new, you know, impress the new town there? Uh, anything that might be interesting to show off about your business that might not initially come to the business owner's mind, but someone like yourself has been doing it a while, perhaps uh, some insight you could share there. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, using, we talked about using your reviews, but some of the images or imagery that you would, I think would be best to use, especially to promote the fact that you are in a new potential um, local area would be if you can highlight, if there's any specialized work that you've done or anything that was perhaps a technical job um, you know, yes, before and afters are great. Absolutely, that shiny after is always very impressive. Um, or if there's any other uh, local establishments that sit warmly in the hearts of um, other neighbors, that would be a great 
uh, thing to showcase if you worked on say that building or that landscaping, or maybe you did that pressure washing, absolutely highlight that because you'll win over the local audience if you can, if you can showcase those things. Uh, that's, uh, that's, it, it's so funny that sometimes that thing uh, or that sort of mindset, you know, cop mind like oh yeah like the the buildings in town but sometimes when you live there because sometimes the new territory isn't necessarily unfamiliar territory um and so perhaps a degree mind says like okay well if someone was coming from way far away what would you want to show off about that particular area you know so even if it's your team you know you talk about focusing your team or showing off your team your team having lunch at a local establishment just a couple of blocks down, but oh man, they're they're there. Like that's a great way to really ingrain yourself. And maybe I'm a little biased because if you want to impress a Philadelphian, you just put a cheesesteak in there. And we're like, oh look, the thing, you know. But uh, <laughs> that, that works. It, it kind of helps you, uh, you know, with your local market. Um, you know, I want to thank everybody that that submitted questions. Uh, and and I see you know a lot of likes and stuff coming through. Um, and perhaps we didn't get to your question uh, in this round, but. Kevin touched on it. Uh, the nice job marketing team, the nice job team in general, you know, success, uh, you know, relationships, activations, our convert team. Um, we're always available to try to help you out. Now, if you call in the middle of the night, uh, you might not be able to start us out of bed, but we'd love for you to, you know, drop us an email, uh, especially if you're in our Facebook user group, our heroes user group. Um, we are always up for a discussion on there. Uh, any discussion that comes to that group, we like fellow business owners that kind of chime in, but we will always bring our expertise uh, if we are asked or we feel that, that we can help. Um, and the one reason that we wanted to do this was to also share our excitement coming up for uh, Black Friday. Now we can't announce the deal just yet, but every single one of us on the marketing team uh, has been kind of been focused on this deal um, and, and and are really excited about it. Uh, and it has something for just about everybody. If, if you've never used Nice Job before, or um, you know, if if you've been with us since the very beginning. Um, but the last thing I want to kind of bring in because this week about us doing you know some things for free to kind of to build up and, and help business owners. I want to ask each and every one of you here in season two, I've been asking a big question at the end of the podcast. Uh, the question I've asked our experts is, uh, you know, what is something you don't know that you're excited to learn about? But for this one in particular, I want to ask a, a different sort of question. 2020 has been a difficult year for a lot of people out there. Um, and one thing in particular I've noticed about the Nice Job community is there is a lot of positivity that that has kept people going and, and really, you know, pushed it. And as we get towards the end of this calendar year and we get ready for 2021, there's a lot of excitement. So I want to ask, you know, uh, not quite personal, but a, a pointed question. Um, and, and Curtis, I'll start with you. You work for a nice job. You're our partnerships manager. What are you most excited about to help our community and our audience uh, accomplish in 2021? Uh, you put me on the spot, but uh, I can honestly say, you know, with 2021 coming, I think a lot of us are looking to shake off the rust. Uh, for many of you, it's been the busiest year ever, and that's fantastic. What I think we're most excited about is helping you move to that next level of your business, whatever that might be. Whether you're just starting out, really looking to hit that first milestone, or whether you're looking to hit that next level of revenue growth and profit growth, whether you're looking to add a new truck or new team members to your team. There's all sorts of ways that our processes and certainly our platform can help you with that. And on the partnerships front, definitely always looking to add new integration partners, new solutions and automations that can make your life a lot easier and give you some time back in your day. So I'm very excited about bringing on some new partnerships, activating some new areas and uh, continuing to serve you guys as best we can. Yeah. So if you're a uh, you know potential partner out there or uh, you know you want to start referring your friends to Nice Job or anything like that, reach out to Curtis. Um, he's going to help you out here in 2021. Kevin, uh, quickly right to you. What are you most excited about to help the Nice Job community with in 2021? Um, I'm most excited about uh, extending empathy um, to uh, customers in our client base and, and better enabling them to extend empathy to, to, you know, in turn their customers and their local communities. Um, I think the great thing about thinking of it like that perspective is what works best in for marketing, for digital marketing, for social media marketing, for website marketing, um, and this for branding your business in general, um, I, have all been things that have really been highlighted a lot um, over the past year. It's been a tough year for um, everybody. <laughs> like, if we're just going to be real, it's been it's been the toughest year in a long time for a lot of people. Um, where 
it makes us kind of come back to earth and and realize that you know we live in a society and we're all community and everybody's success and everybody's happiness is you know it's all connected and the best way i think to help grow your business and really make a difference in your community um really improve your you know your upsell your retention revenue metrics um are the same things that like make for like a great um you know, make you a great person and make like a great neighbor. You're a great yeah, neighbor neighbor. in general. Like yeah. we want, like I want him. Like I love being a good neighbor in my apartment building. I love being a good neighbor in my local community. Um, I want nice job to be a good neighbor for for you. And I, I feel like it's. I'm most excited about this doing more of what we're already trying to do because I enjoy it. Yeah, and we don't use the word community lightly. Um, you know, I can I can say just from the community aspect here, uh, you know, as the community manager, uh, that we, we felt you know some of the pain along the way. We've been inspired by a lot of the optimism along the way, um, and you know, we we try to you know come up as polished as we can. But we're a small business right along with there, and I know that we had to do a lot of digging deep ourselves, um, and. and you know, it was it was tough at times, but the the way that we were kind of able to lean on our community and we saw our community lean upon one another was was so inspiring. And, and Devin, I'll come to you to ask what you're excited about for for 2021 because you and I have talked collectively of trying to keep the temperature of this community, uh, you know, really diving in there, uh, you know, as, as we kind of saw this through. Um, and and so for us, it, it's it's been a longer year in in an odd way you know, while there was a lot of new difficulties, there was a lot of fulfillment. And so we're excited for 2021 for all that, that is to come pretty much with all we've been through. But you in particular, what, what are you most excited about to help our community with in 2021? Yeah, I mean, I just want to say well said. Uh, Kevin, that was really hitting the, the nail on the head there with, with that. But I also think, you know, nice job is in the business of of reputation marketing. And that's taking something that you already have, that you always have, no matter how 2020 has served you, you know, if you're thriving or if you've had to close your doors, your reputation is with you um, and your community knows that. So what I'm looking forward to in 2021 is taking our area of expertise and showing you how to really leverage something that you already have that you will always have, whether it's how to use your reputation to um, hire people, whether it's how you use your reputation to uh, create high converting Facebook ads, um, you know, we're, we're here, we're here to help you. Um, and I think that your reputation is such an asset. Um, and that's something that, that you will always have. Um, and we're just going to show you how to really use it. And that's that's exciting in its own right. And and for me uh, to answer the question, um, one element I'm definitely excited about for 2021, you just saw um, it's being able to bring you guys, um, you know, whether it's my colleagues um, who are experts in their own right and, and you know so knowledgeable, I learn from them almost every single day. Um, whether it's outside of Nice Jobs community, experts there, um, whatever I can do or whatever kind of conduit I can be uh, to bring information and, and bring knowledge your way, uh, so you can not only be a better business owner um, but a better community member and a better individual as well. Um, we are committed to you guys uh, and getting out there and helping you be the best you can be. And no matter where you're at, large small, uh, your best year ever, your worst year ever. We want to be there to kind of to, to go along with you, you know, be in the trenches when we need to be and show you the light if that's what's needed as well. But in the end, since it's your reputation, uh, we want to make sure that if you are out there working as hard as you possibly can, that you get the great reputation that you deserve and that you're able to take it, uh, you know, market it, get it out there and really impact your community as well. The one thing we've seen in 2020 is when community comes together, no matter what mother nature, what science, the world, anything you want to say, what they can throw at us, when a community comes together, there is such a strength there that can overcome absolutely anything. So, I didn't know we would end with kind of a sermon there, uh, but I, I, for me, it's it's always uh, it's always heartwarming whenever I get a chance to get together with the Nice Job Marketing Team, uh, the Nice Job Community, or even just anyone out there that I that I come across because we've been so isolated in 2020, uh, and in coming together, I, I've learned so much. So. Uh, in this podcast in particular, this particular episode, I hope you got some takeaways. Again, if we, if we didn't get to your question uh, or something you heard, if you're watching this on the replay, 
sparked a question in your mind, please absolutely reach out. Uh, we will more than gladly take the time uh, to to help you through, um, you know, any marketing situation you're getting through or anything that you kind of just want to bounce ideas off of. Um, we are here for you guys. But coming up next will be Black Friday. Big sale there. Pay attention there. If you are uh, one of the lucky people that gets our newsletters, you're going to see Devin's great work. She's been grinding away all week. Uh, when you get a chance to go check out, uh, you know, a, a special landing page have for you, and when you're finding that very easily, you're going to see Kevin's work in action. Uh, and when you are starting to crush it, and you're finding out other, you know, software that can help you out, and you're finding out ways to be the best you can be. That's Curtis's work down below. And when you have someone just talking with you so you don't feel like you're alone surfing on Facebook, you'll get to see my work in action as well. Um, all right, gang, I think that's it. Uh, so from all of us here at Nice Job, we hope you're staying healthy. We hope you're staying safe and not forgetting to have a little fun out there as well. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. Black Friday. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great day, everybody.